In the neon-lit sprawl of New Chicago, amidst the towering skyscrapers and hovering cars, 10-year-old Timmy Jacobs stood out as a whirlwind of energy and mischief. Known in his neighborhood for his elaborate pranks and relentless curiosity, Timmy had an appetite for adventure that was insatiable. On a clear, brisk evening as the city hummed with the distant sound of hover trains and the chatter of pedestrians, Timmy was in his backyard, preoccupied with his latest project, a homemade rocket. He had spent weeks gathering parts, following online tutorials, and meticulously assembling the rocket. Tonight was the testing phase. His parents believed he was safely tucked in bed dreaming of distant galaxies. Instead, he was out under the stars, match in hand, ready to launch his creation. As he struck the match and lit the fuse, a bright streak in the sky caught his attention. The match dropped to the ground, forgotten as he watched a glowing object descend gracefully toward Earth. It was too controlled and deliberate to be a meteorite. The object, emitting a soft blue light, landed gently in his own backyard, just meters away from where Timmy stood, wide-eyed and open-mouthed. The hatch of the object opened slowly, releasing a hiss of steam. Out stepped Therian, a being from the Glarxian race, with luminescent skin that shifted in color with his mood, currently a nervous shade of violet. Therian was tall and slender, with eyes that gleamed with a mix of curiosity and caution. He had heard tales of Earth's inhabitants, especially the young ones, whose reputations for being wildly unpredictable and ingeniously clever had spread across star systems. Therian, a scholar of intergalactic cultures, had traveled to Earth on a mission. His goal was to understand firsthand why even the mention of human children could evoke a mix of awe and fear throughout the galaxy. He had prepared himself to meet with diplomats and experts, not to land in the backyard of a human child, least of all one like Timmy. Timmy, recovering from his initial shock, approached Therian with a grin. Hi, I'm Timmy. Did you come from space? Is that a spaceship? His questions tumbled out faster than Therian could process them. Yes, I am from beyond your solar system, Therian replied, his translator device converting his thoughts into fluent English. I'm here to learn about your kind, particularly young humans like yourself. Awesome, Timmy exclaimed, his eyes lighting up with excitement. You can hang out with me? I'll show you everything you need to know about Earth kids. We're not scary, you'll see. Therian, still slightly overwhelmed but intrigued by the fearless and friendly demeanor of the small human, nodded. That would be most enlightening, he said, the violet in his skin shifting to a more relaxed shade of blue. I accept your guidance, young Timmy. Together they turned to look at the now forgotten homemade rocket, its fuse burned out harmlessly. First, let's launch my rocket. Timmy suggested eagerly, picking up another match. Then we can figure out the rest. As the rocket finally soared into the night sky, tracing a fiery arc over New Chicago, Therian realized he was about to embark on perhaps the most unusual and exciting study of his career. Little did he know, it was not just about understanding human children, but discovering the boundless potential they carried within them. This was the beginning of an extraordinary friendship that would soon unravel the reasons behind the galaxy's mixed fear and fascination with Earth's youngest inhabitants. The following day, Timmy decided to introduce Therian to a broader slice of human and alien interaction, the Galactic Fair, an annual event held in New Chicago. It was designed to promote interstellar friendship and cooperation, boasting a colorful mix of earthly and alien cultures, technology demonstrations, and a variety of games and foods from across the galaxy. As they arrived, Timmy's eyes sparkled with excitement, pulling a somewhat apprehensive Therian through the bustling crowds. The fair was a spectacle of sights and sounds, vendors selling exotic interstellar treats, musicians playing instruments that floated around their heads, and children, both human and alien, laughing and playing together. Timmy led Therian straight to a booth featuring a shooting game that was popular among visitors. The game involved using a laser gun to hit moving targets for points. Watch this, Therian, Timmy shouted over the noise of the crowd, grabbing a gun and taking aim. Therian observed carefully, noting how quickly Timmy adapted to the game mechanics. His first few shots were off mark, but he quickly adjusted his aim, started using the gun's ricochet function to hit multiple targets with a single shot. The booth operator, a tall and wiry Zeltronian, watched in amazement as Timmy's scores began to skyrocket. Soon, a small crowd had gathered, cheering every time Timmy hit a particularly difficult target. By the end of the game, Timmy had set a new high score and won the top prize, 
a model spaceship that was reputed to be practically impossible to win. Therian was both impressed and slightly concerned by Timmy's swift mastery of the game. Your ability to learn and adapt is remarkable, he commented as they walked away from the booth, Timmy clutching his prize with pride. I just figured out the pattern and went with it, Timmy said with a shrug. That's what's fun about games. You get to try different strategies. They continued to explore the fair with Timmy enthusiastically dragging Therian from one exhibit to another. At a booth demonstrating alien technology, Timmy quickly understood the basic principles behind a levitation device and even gave suggestions on how it could be modified to work more efficiently. The alien exhibitor, a curious and amiable Draxon, took notes eagerly, visibly impressed by the young human's insights. As the day progressed, Therian observed not only Timmy's boundless energy and creativity, but also his interaction with other children and aliens. Despite their differences, Timmy navigated social interactions with an ease that surprised the Glarxian. It wasn't just Timmy's intellect or energy that made human children remarkable, it was their innate ability to connect, adapt, and influence those around them. By the time the fair was drawing to a close, Therian had gathered a plethora of observations. Human children like Timmy not only possessed a remarkable capacity for learning and adaptation, but also demonstrated a unique blend of curiosity, empathy, and strategic thinking. These traits, Therian realized, could indeed be seen as intimidating or even terrifying to cultures and species with very different social structures and educational systems. As they left the fair, Timmy full of stories and laughter, Therian noted, Your kind's potential is immense, Timmy. It's not just about what you can do but how you do it. You engage with the world in a way that could either forge strong alliances or stir considerable apprehension. Timmy looked up at Therian, his expression thoughtful. So we're kind of like superheroes? In a way, yes, Therian admitted, smiling. You might just be, Timmy. To some, you're heroes. To others, a mystery to be solved. And with the setting sun casting long shadows over the fairground, they continued their journey ready to uncover more about the incredible capabilities of human children. The next day, Therian decided to deepen his understanding of human children by observing Timmy in a more structured environment, his school. They arrived at New Chicago Elementary as the morning bell rang, blending in with the stream of bustling students. Therian, disguised with a holographic image to look human, followed Timmy into a classroom buzzing with the energy of young minds. The day's lesson was focused on creativity. The art teacher, Miss Reynolds, laid out an array of materials, clay, paint, colored papers, and recyclables, and challenged the students to create something that represented future technology. Therian watched in fascination as the children, including Timmy, dove into the task with enthusiasm and unbridled imagination. Timmy chose to work with clay and some electronic scraps. He sculpted a model of what he called a solar-powered multi-terrain explorer, designed for planetary expeditions. It included solar panels made from cardboard and wheels from bottle caps. As Timmy explained his creation to Therian, it was evident that his ability to integrate different materials and concepts was not just play, but a sophisticated synthesis of function and form. Therian took notes on his data pad, his eyes rarely leaving the bustling activity around the classroom. The children's projects ranged from practical machines to fantastical inventions, each reflecting a unique perspective on the future. This exercise highlighted not only the diverse ways human children thought, but also their capacity to envision complex ideas and bring them to tangible expression. As the class moved to recess, a dispute erupted on the playground over a game of kickball. Timmy was quick to step into the fray, mediating between the two sides with a calmness that belied his age. He listened to each party, then proposed a new set of rules that everyone agreed on, allowing the game to resume with renewed spirits. Therian, observing this, noted another crucial aspect of human children, their innate leadership and negotiation skills. These were not merely taught but seemed ingrained, perhaps a result of their social environment or natural evolution. Such traits, Therian realized, made human children not only adaptable and creative, but also potential leaders and peacemakers. Later, as they walked back to Timmy's house, Therian discussed his observations with him. Timmy, your ability to create and mediate was impressive today. These are qualities that many species, including mine, struggle to cultivate even in adulthood. Timmy shrugged, kicking a stone along the sidewalk. It's just normal stuff we do. I guess we don't think about it much. That may be, 
Therian replied. But it is precisely this normal behavior that makes your kind so extraordinary. The simplicity with which you approach complex problems, your creativity and your ability to lead and reconcile are powerful tools. They could very well shape the future of not just your planet, but potentially the galaxy. Timmy looked up, his eyes wide with a mix of pride and astonishment. Really? We could do that? Yes, Therian affirmed, his voice filled with a mix of admiration and caution. Indeed, you could. And that is something both wonderful and daunting for the rest of us. The next phase of Therian's study involved a more controlled experiment to test Timmy's adaptability and problem-solving skills under various interstellar scenarios. They set up in a private room at the local science center, which had been equipped with a state-of-the-art simulation chamber, capable of generating realistic, immersive environments based on Therian's inputs. Today, I want to see how you handle different situations that you might encounter in the galaxy, Therian explained as he calibrated the equipment. Think of it as a game, where you need to solve problems or negotiate peace. Timmy, thrilled by the prospect of playing what to him seemed like the ultimate video game, nodded eagerly. Bring it on. The first scenario placed Timmy on a distant planet where two alien tribes were on the brink of war over a misunderstanding about land rights. Timmy was to act as a mediator. The simulation created holographic representations of the alien leaders, their advisors, and the disputed land. Timmy listened to both sides, then cleverly suggested a joint survey of the land, using technology to determine its best use. He proposed that one tribe, which needed water, could use the land near the river, while the other, needing fertile soil for crops, could farm the land further inland. His solution was accepted, and the simulated war was averted. Impressed but not yet satisfied, Therian set up a more complex scenario. This time Timmy found himself aboard a spaceship that was under attack by space pirates. The crew was panicking and the ship's captain was injured. Timmy had to take command, organize the crew, and devise a strategy to escape the pirates. Drawing on his knowledge of science fiction and some quick thinking, Timmy used a series of deceptive maneuvers and a risky jump through a nearby asteroid field to lose the pirates, saving the ship and its crew. The final test was the most challenging. A simulated galaxy-wide disaster involving a network of unstable wormholes appearing near various inhabited planets, threatening millions of lives. Timmy had to coordinate a multi-species rescue operation, involving different technologies and cultural approaches. He quickly learned about each alien race's capabilities and suggested innovative ways they could work together, using the strengths of one species to complement the weaknesses of another. As the simulation concluded, Timmy emerged sweaty but triumphant, his eyes bright with excitement. That was intense. Did I do okay? Therian was more than impressed. He was astounded. Okay? Timmy, you were exceptional. Your ability to stay calm under pressure, to think creatively and collaboratively, and to lead are beyond what many seasoned leaders are capable of. As they reviewed the recordings of the simulations, Therian pointed out how Timmy's solutions were unorthodox yet effective showcasing a blend of human intuition and ingenuity. You have a natural knack for leadership and problem-solving, Timmy. It's clear that human children like you possess not just the potential for creativity, but for true strategic genius. The data gathered from these simulations provided Therian with invaluable insights into the capabilities of human children. Their potential to handle complex, high-stakes situations with a mixture of courage, creativity, and intelligence was indeed something that could unsettle more predictable, less adaptable species. Leaving the simulation chamber, Therian knew his report to the Intergalactic Council would paint a picture of human children as not just unique, but invaluable to the future of the galaxy. The implications were profound, and Therian felt a mix of excitement and responsibility to convey this message accurately and persuasively. Following the success of the simulations, word of Therian's study spread and soon a special council meeting was called on the Glarxian homeworld. Leaders and representatives from various peaceful alien races convened to hear what Therian had discovered about human children. The council room buzzed with anticipation as Therian prepared to present his findings, with Timmy by his side. The presentation began with Therian explaining his initial observations and experiences on Earth. He described his surprise at encountering Timmy and witnessing firsthand the young boy's creativity and adaptability. Using visuals from their adventures, including scenes from the Galactic Fair and School, Therian highlighted Timmy's ability to innovate, 
negotiate, and lead. Human children, Therian articulated, possess a unique blend of creativity, resilience, and strategic thinking. These capabilities, while remarkable, can indeed be daunting to those unfamiliar with such dynamic potential. He then detailed the simulation tests, showcasing videos of Timmy's performances in various crisis scenarios. The audience watched, captivated by the young human's ability to calmly manage complex situations that would challenge even seasoned leaders of their own species. Therian explained, these simulations were designed to mimic real interstellar crises. Timmy's responses were not only effective but demonstrated a profound capacity for leadership and diplomacy. He paused, letting the implications sink in among the audience. The room was silent for a moment before questions began. An elder from the Andromedian delegation spoke first. You suggest that these traits are common among human children? This adaptability and quick thinking? Yes, Therian replied. From what I have observed, these traits are encouraged and nurtured from a young age on Earth. Their educational and social systems promote such skills. Another representative from the serene aquatic planet of Hydronics raised a concern. Could this not make them a potential threat? Their unpredictability and rapid development? Therian nodded thoughtfully. It is a valid concern. However, it is also an opportunity. By understanding and engaging with human societies, especially their young, we can foster alliances based on mutual respect and learning. The room mulled over this perspective, the atmosphere shifting from wary to contemplative. Therian proposed a series of interstellar educational exchanges and collaborative projects that could involve human children and alien youths. The goal, he continued, is not just to learn from each other, but to build a foundation of trust and cooperation that transcends our differences. We have much to gain from including humans, particularly their young, in our galactic community. As the presentation concluded, the council applauded, their expressions reflecting a mix of newfound respect and cautious optimism. They agreed to initiate preliminary exchange programs, with Timmy's school as one of the first participants. Leaving the podium, Timmy, who had watched the proceedings with wide-eyed wonder, looked up at Therian. Did I really help do all that? Therian smiled, placing a hand on the boy's shoulder. Yes, Timmy, you did. You've shown them that the youth of Earth are not just to be admired or feared, but understood and embraced. As they left the council chamber, the representatives gathered around, eager to learn more about Earth and its vibrant young inhabitants. The session, which had started with apprehension, ended with an air of excitement and curiosity about the potential collaborations that lay ahead. Therian and Timmy returned to Earth their bonds strengthened by the journey and their hearts full of hope for the future connections between Earth's children and the galaxy at large. After the impactful presentation at the Glarxian homeworld, Therian and Timmy returned to Earth, their mission now transitioning from observation to active engagement. As they descended through the atmosphere, both felt a renewed sense of purpose. The galaxy was watching, curious and hopeful about the potential that human children held. Back in New Chicago, life resumed its usual pace, but with a new twist. News of Timmy's adventures and the Interstellar Council's decision to initiate exchange programs spread throughout his school and community. Timmy became something of a local hero, not just for his antics, but for showcasing the capabilities of Earth's children to the galaxy. Therian, too, became a regular figure around the school, helping to set up communications and programs for the upcoming exchanges. He worked closely with educators and students preparing them for the integration of alien cultures and technologies into their curriculum. One sunny afternoon as they sat in Timmy's backyard, the very spot where they had first met, Therian set up a small device that projected images of the galaxy. Look, Timmy, he said, pointing at a cluster of stars. That's where I come from. And those other points, potential future friends from the exchange program. Timmy, his eyes reflecting the starlight of the projection, was full of questions. What are their schools like? Do they play games? What kind of food do they eat? Therian laughed, delighted by the boy's never-ending curiosity. All very different and all very interesting. You'll see soon. They're just as excited to learn about you and your planet. As the exchange programs began, children from various planets visited Timmy's school. They brought with them their own unique perspectives, technologies, and games. Timmy and his classmates learned about zero-gravity sports from the children of the floating colonies of Aralon, underwater painting from the aquatic Nifarians, 
and mathematical puzzles that were a favorite among the logically inclined Zentari. In return, Timmy shared Earth's own rich cultural tapestry. He taught his new friends how to play baseball, introduced them to the joys of baking chocolate chip cookies, and organized a music day where everyone shared songs from their home planets. Through these interactions, the initial wariness that some of the alien children felt towards their human counterparts began to dissolve, replaced by a mutual fascination and respect. Timmy, with his boundless energy and innate warmth, was at the center of this cultural melding, embodying the potential Therian had seen in him from the start. Months passed, and the success of the exchange program led to its expansion. Other schools on Earth began participating, and soon the program was a staple of interstellar education, bridging young minds across the galaxy. One evening, as Timmy and Therian watched another ship descend from the stars, bringing more visitors, Timmy turned to Therian. You know, I used to think space was just about planets and stars, but it's really about the friends we make, isn't it? Therian nodded, his eyes twinkling with a mix of pride and joy. Yes, Timmy. The galaxy is vast, but connections like ours make it a community. You've helped show that even the youngest among us can be guardians of that community. As the stars shone brightly above, reflecting the possibilities of new friendships and adventures, Timmy and Therian knew that this was just the beginning. The galaxy might once have feared the unpredictability of human children, but now it looked to them with hope, eager to learn from their creativity, bravery, and boundless potential. With the universe watching, Earth's young guardians were ready to lead the way, one friendship at a time.